Y'all ready to be history? Get started. Welcome. Hi. 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 Hello, everyone. To the Pro Audio Suite. These guys are professional. They're motivated. With Tex the VO stars. George Whittam, founder of Source Elements. Robert Marshall, international audio engineer. Darren Robbo Robertson. And Global Voice. Andrew Peters. Thanks to Tribu. Austrian Audio. Making passion heard. Source Elements. George the Tech Whittam. And Robbo and AP's international demos. To find out more about us, check the ProAudioSuite.com. Line up, man. And don't forget the code TRIPAP200. That will give you $200 off your try booth. Uh, now, I've been playing around with uh, the proximity effect of the 416, the legendary 416. And I've never really set it up to shoot straight down the barrel. So, what's your default location? What's your default placement? Usually slightly off to the side. Okay, so still relatively level, but just coming, pointing at you a little bit off to the side. Bit to the yeah, and, and pointing down. So pointing down, but slightly oh, okay. to the side. Got it. Being this way is still pointing down, targeting the mouth, but going full straight at it. And um, I did one read like that, then I followed it up with one slightly to the side, mm -hmm. and then I followed that up with a, an 818. But... I couldn't. I, I know we've talked about the proximity effect of the forty-one-six, but I actually couldn't believe the difference. It was. It shocked me that it was so, so bright. And it's how I remember the forty-one-six sounding. Well, so what you're saying is like you kind of, you kind of detuned the mic. You detuned yeah. it to calm down what makes the mic so aggressive. Mm -hmm. Yep. By using that placement. Yep. Well, it's, and then when I put it back, it was like, holy crap. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, oh, yeah, that's what that mic is. Well, it's interesting because like. there's, uh, there's a guy who AP and I know who work, who, and have both worked with, a guy called Steve Britton, who's mm -hmm. sort of the big, ballsy, you know, rock and roll yeah. voiceover guy. And he actually uses it to his advantage because he's not so hyped. His natural voice is not so sort of steeped in those sort of high mids and highs that so he, he actually gets right up on it. I mean, I, the best way I can describe it is he pretty much swallows the thing when he does a voiceover yeah. um, and, yeah. and uses it to his advantage because it, it sort of obviously accentuates that, that part of his voice that isn't really there naturally. Um, the right. only deficit is that from an engineer's point of view that as soon as you touch anything in the highs, it just blows up. Um, mm. you've got to be so careful around up there with him when you're, when you're sort of mixing him. But, um, yeah. yeah. Well, the strange thing about his voice is a very, like you think you're going to have to play with all the lows cause it's such a big, mm. deep voice. Mm. Uh, but as soon as you touch anything, the highs just go mental. Well, yeah. And that's the way you've got to work with Steve's voice is, is rather than sort of additive EQ, it's subtractive. You've just, you've really just got to m sort of balance it by taking away some of that deeper stuff that's there in bucket loads and just leave the top yeah. alone. Otherwise it will just destroy itself. And, and you've got, you know, you know, I've seen people with three DSs on a track trying to get rid of it once they've started, you know, sort of trying to get that uh -huh. typical radio cut through, which is the biggest mistake. And as soon as you say, start again, but don't touch the highs, just, you know, cut some lows. They go, ah, oh, yeah, okay. So my question is with the 416 it was the guy who was the voice of the love boat. He was the, was he the first guy to use the 416 for Ernie Anderson. I don't know if he was the first, but he was certainly the most well known for it. I thought Don LaFontaine made it really popular. Well, Ernie is the one who's caught on camera using that mic on video and other things where he's in the studio at ABC and he's literally doing promo, hmm. you know. Um, and, and I got to imagine someone just did it. He's like, here's a mic. Ugh, it's the one that the freaking news guy uses, but here you go. Say the word. The story I heard was not like, I think he was a bit paranoid and he didn't like being in the booth because he thought people were talking about him. Right. And so he wanted to sit out in the control area. That's right. And he couldn't use a normal large diaphragm. Couldn't use a U87 like, yeah, out there. Yeah. Every damn thing. So one of the guys on, on the floor came came up with the idea of using the, the 416. <laughs> That's what I heard. Why don't you use this razor blade to record your voice? <laughs> yeah, it was probably a 415 or whatever they had at the time. Yeah, probably a T a T powered 415 Could be. at the time. Yeah. Yeah, I got a, I got a couple of those. Mm -hmm. Those sound a little bit different than the 416. Yeah. 41 a little bit more a little bit less a little hyped. more distorted. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh yeah, so that 
that sound, um, for whatever reason, better or for worse, it's become the character of what a voiceover sound sounds like. Like when you listen to a voice recorded with a close up mic, I think we've gotten incredibly tuned what that sound is. It's become what was the word you used, Rabo? Uh, Not a standard, but something um, else. Uh, yeah, I did, didn't I? <laughs> I used a big word. Printed. Uh, a big benchmark. Word. It's a benchmark. Benchmark. Yeah. yeah. Kind of a benchmark. Yeah. So when I, I've been hearing that mic with my clients and promo people for so, so long. So when I hear another mic right up side of it, if it's an accurate mic with very little color, such as the OC818, it sounds, well, it sounds like this. Here, here's a 416 of, of Andrew and then the 818. So this is what, you know, this, this is what a non-accurate mic and then an accurate mic sounds like side by side. And then you did it in two different placements, right? Yeah, I did. That, that was because of our discussion a couple of weeks back where we were talking about placement with the 416, which I'd never, I thought, oh yeah, well, whatever. Andrew, where do you like the 416? <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> 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 where did you like that? <laughs> He's got a dark brown voice. No, he hasn't. Um, <laughs> well, if they say that your voice is chocolatey, you can tell them why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah it's getting a bit messy. Now, is yes, it? indeed. Um, so, <laughs> I I always had the forty one six sort of like facing down, but to the slightly to the side. So I'm sort mm -hmm. of almost not not quite side addressing, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, that's how I had it, and, and I got used to that sound. And then after our discussion, I thought, I wonder if the proximity. What, I wonder what it really is like. So I moved the mic and went basically pointing s straight at me, but slightly downwards towards my mouth. And I couldn't believe the difference. It was just like two Huge different mics. It was two different yeah. mics. And it was the old get a toothpick and stick it in your eardrum kind of, you know, sound that you get with the 41.6. Yeah. No, yeah. That's which, is, which is the other reason why I think engineers like it, because you get a voice recorded on that and it's just going to cut through everything. And you don't have to do a lot more to it. And it just sort of has this pre-processing that works for... A lot of that in-your-face advertising. The hamburger helper of microphones. Yeah, it's just like in-your-face in advertising, right there, done. You know, here's what it sounded like. Here's the samples. I got them right here. The Mercedes-Benz GLE SUV is the complete package. The Mercedes-Benz GLE SUV is the complete package. The Mercedes-Benz GLE SUV is the complete package. So that's yep. first one was straight down the barrel, second one to the side, and the third one was uh, the eight one eight. And you can hear it. Eight one eight, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It just gets less and less edgy, less <laughs> and less. Does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, yeah. The, the interesting thing about the four one six, and 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 I guess its impact on the industry is it's been copied a few times, probably, or tried to be copied. But I mean, I'm on an NTG five right now, and it's probably the closest. I reckon, than I've heard. I don't know. The NTG five's got more bass. I'm on an NTG five too. It I, does. I think it's. I think the NTG five is a warmer mic. Yes, it, it, I would it agree. does have that shotgunny in your face thing, but it's a little bit actually bigger sounding. But not. Yeah. It's not necessarily more cutty. The the four sixteen. I I think this the eight one eight. You could take it and EQ it to do what the four sixteen does. Oh yeah, of course. You of might course. pick up more room, but the four sixteen is just sort of like there it is. It's gonna. It's put done for lots you. Lots of cut. And, yeah. yeah. I yeah, mean, you're right. I'm so used to the way that bright condenser mic sounds that I add EQ to my own mic because I want it to sound more like that bright condenser mic sound. Exactly. So I'm talking yeah. into the, uh, right now I'm talking into the Earthworks Ethos, which is a very flat mic. And if I cut my 10 D, 10, what is it? 10 kilohertz, 6 dB, sh uh, you know, shelf, basically. It's not a shelf, but it looks like one. Then it sounds like it sounds like this, right? And it still sounds good. It just doesn't have that top end that bright sizzle well, anymore. I, I think yeah. the extreme difference would be go from a four sixteen to an SM seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the yeah, SM seven wow. has like this kind of this mid range thing that I've never been a big fan of the way that sounds for voiceover. Yeah, for voiceover. Do you like the PL twenty, the RE twenty, better than the SM seven? Yeah, or personally. Radio I think voice. So. Yeah. The PL twenty is the RE twenty without that big basket on it the front, right? No, I cannot tell you the difference between them actually. I believe they are the exact same okay. mic. Just 
years difference. Oh, like, gotcha. For this year to this year, they made the RE20, and then they, or I think the PL20 was before the RE20. Gotcha. But yeah, no, I, I think that as powerful and big of a mic, and no matter how much Rush Limbaugh wanted to gold plate his, I think the SM7 beat the PL20 in overall installations since the pandemic, at least. It's like, holy cow, did they get the SM7 out there on podcasts? Yeah, absolutely. I don't, I don't yeah. know who they have to thank for it, but I'm um, Joe Rogan's probably high up on the list because. He's been, you know, YouTubing his podcast for quite a few years now. I mean, there's a there's an ad campaign that I've never seen an ad for an SM7. That's marketing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Like you, you you need it and I didn't even tell you. I mean, I just installed a podcast studio and the mic was not chosen because that's the best mic. It was chosen because that mic was seen on, you know, another podcast. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Right? Yeah. You know, because the owners don't know. And the 416's got that too. And so it's like, yeah, the SM7, you can abuse it and it's going to be pretty consistent and mm -hmm. whatever, dark and warm. And and it has that thing for radio where it's not going to pick up. It's just going to seem to pick up the voice and not the other stuff, right? Like the 416's got the cut, yeah. The SM7, SM7B basically eat the things anyway, and they're built like a tank, which is perfect. Yeah, you can you can you can abuse the whole mic, and yeah, you won't hear. I mean, I, I don't know how Howard Stern gets away with like abusing his Neumann condenser the way he does, and you never hear it. Can you explain yeah, that? Yeah, no, I still about that. that one's yeah. still a mystery. It's like it's like it should just be like like this kind of shit. <laughs> exactly. over this because it's Stern. not yeah. connected. I'm sure of it. I don't think it's connected. It's not yeah, connected. It's a fucking prop, it's a prop. isn't it? You yeah. can't hold those things. Yeah. yeah, it's a prop. Yeah. yeah. Now, now yeah, this yeah. sounds more like an SM7B, doesn't it? This is that. It does yeah. a little darker, fatter, yeah. a little bit less top end, a little bit more mid bump around one k, a couple of dB. Now it's now it's like an SM7. I could go to the low frequency and boost up the bottom end. Now it would sound even maybe a little bit more. So in in the spirit of don't send us a processed voice, stop using four sixteens because they sound too processed already. Yes. Stop using them kind of all together. Right? No. But, but it's kind of weird, isn't it? We're like, we get a we get a large diaphragm mic or something, and then we try and EQ it up to sound like a 416. Like yeah. 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 yeah exactly. It's like, yeah. just use the 416 and be done with it, really. I've caught myself doing that where somebody's like, okay, here's a sample of my 416. Here's a sample of my TLM 103. Can you make me a stack for each of these two mics? And I just, over the time, I'm just like, okay, I'm not going to touch the EQ. At all on and the, the 416. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you're going to make their tail on 103 sound like a 416. Well, so resist, what did you I accomplish? I resist the urge. <laughs> I used to. I used to. Yeah. But I resist the urge. And now what I'm doing is I'm mostly just going to do corrective EQ. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like when there's like a harshness or nasal... Um, some resonance in the booth, and that's it. I think with the with the TLM, you could give it a little bit more of a glassy sound, and not so much of an upper mid, mm -hmm. but a way airy, high like frequency kind of airy boost, yeah. and and make it like nice, and it, it it's it'll still have some sort of I wouldn't call it cut, but presence literally, um, but it'll be different than the four sixteen, which has that. Yeah. That, that that frequency that every speaker has, right? It's like 4K, 8K, all in, packed in there. It's like like your worst speaker on earth plays back those frequencies for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, and the 818, well, it's the polar opposite, isn't it? It's just like... I, I, I think the 818's like the TLM. You could, you could just give it like a glassy, airy... Mm -hmm. Sound, you're not cornered into the sound of the four six. Like I, I, I think the eight one eight could be more of a chameleon than the four sixteen. The four sixteen oh, does its thing, and that is it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a one trick pony. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a one trick pony. But the way you manipulate it is by placement. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's became obvious. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, it, it did sound like two different microphones just by moving. It. I mean, the first time I saw a forty one two different six, voice actors sometimes. Yeah, yeah. The first time I saw a 416 in a, in a audiobook production facility, I was like, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's you see, that weird. seems like for a long-term thing, it's like, that's a that's a harsh mic to be listening to eight hours of the same person. You'd right. want yeah. the mm. nice pillowy mic. Yeah. Yes, so I don't I, know what post I mean, they were doing on the audio. They, I'm sure they were doing some EQ. 
It's like well, listening to classical music on NS10s. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> I was going to say, you'd be pulling your earbuds out, you know, halfway, <laughs> yeah, through, mowing the, right. halfway through mowing the lawn. You'd be going, Jesus, yeah. my ears are bleeding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Right. Yep. Well, maybe it's good for the lawnmower. You're mowing the lawn. It's like, it's like I can hear 4K and 8K. Yeah, I'm going, I've got earbuds in to stop going deaf, but I'm going deaf anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a yeah, little. Yeah. Here's a little test. Tell me what this is. The Mercedes-Benz GLE SUV is the complete package. That is that is either the 416 straight on, I think, or maybe to the side. All that was was the 818 with a shelf, high shelf. Uh. With the shelf on it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was a... 8 dB shelf starting at 7 <laughs> Wow. That's a shitload. That's a lot of, that's a lot of dBs. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. It's just, it's so funny. I opened up the AU filter plugin, which is like a really simple four band EQ. And the, the setting I had last loaded wasn't, was, that's what it was. It was just like a, an 8 dB shelf at 7K. Wow. I, just turned, I was like, all right, let's see what that sounds like. So that, that's what that sounds so, like. That's what it sounds like. So the 416 is boost at 4K and boost at 16K. Right, but if you play, if yeah. you if you ran that EQ <laughs> on the 416, well, you would get this. The Mercedes Benz GLE. Ah, make it stop. <laughs> yeah, then, then you'd be like, yeah. D416 it. Try selling a Mercedes Benz with that sound. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Off brand for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's weird. There's a lot of commercial work getting booked, especially female voice stuff that is really bright. Yeah. It is. I, I I used to say like you know like a lot of the times depending on the four six the four fourteen, like some females didn't work as well with a four fourteen because their voices were already kind of airy, and then you get that yeah. really top endy mic thing. on it. Yeah, and and it's like they over they overcompensate, and sometimes like a U eighty seven worked better because right. you just sort of Soft, try to pick yeah. up some of those lower mids and I used to recommend the road NTG three all the time for women because it was so f- a very dark, flat and warm mic and so it worked really to their advantage. Um yeah. a lot of times. Uh, in fact that's funny you should say that because that's the mic I got for um for Somerset for mm. Yeah. The NTG three because it's just it not sharp and nasty. So yeah, it's it's funny I it it you when you have a good mic that gets all the information with no distortion, you can really EQ it, you know. Yeah. And when you have a mic that is pre-filtered, pre-EQed, and arguably has some degree of distortion, it's much harder to yeah. correct it. Like like anything with audio, it's easy to work with a blank slate compared to trying to uncompress. Oh boy, it's oh, impossible. Yeah. Or yeah. undes. Right. Or un crazy 416 EQ something Mm -hmm. because no matter what you do, the fix that you apply will, will create other harms and and you'll just end up with Swiss cheese in the end. So these, these broader, flatter, big diaphragm mics, or what's interesting is I I think to get a really accurate voice, like I've not seen anybody try to record voice with say a, um, like a KM 184. Mm Mm-hmm. And sometimes you see a lot of the opera singers, like like what's an opera singer set up, like a nice small diaphragm away from the distant, singer. Yeah, distant placement. Yeah. Distant, yeah. right? And then you get that just like, that is what it is. It's There's no proximity. There's no... And I'll bet you for some people's voice, maybe something like a really pure, like small diaphragm condenser would be pretty interesting. That's why I was curious about those, um, those Rode TF mics. Yeah. TF5. Because those looked... Pr- yeah, those look pretty high end, small diaphragm condenser, and I bet you those would probably. Wait, didn't one of you guys get the small diaphragm Austrian audio? Yeah, Rob Robert's got them. I got the OC8. Yeah, I got the OC eights, and those are good. I don't think that. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think they're Sheps killers. Well, they're yeah. They're they're closer to one eighty fours. They're they're not Sheps, but they're they're much closer to like honestly, they're much closer to like four fifty four fifty ones. Mm-hmm. Not four fifty. Yeah, yeah, four fifty ones. They're a little bit less full and very good for symbols, but not necessarily the whole. I, I think a really good small diaphragm mic like a Shep would be amazing on the right person's voice, but you'd have to have the right booth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? There's no way. You, you know. know, you can get a Shep's headset microphone. I actually demoed it once. Yeah. $2,400 headset mic. It was a, it was a ultrasound headphone, $600 headphone 
with a chef's and the, capsule. And the, and the microphone's like a pencil. It's like a pencil. Yeah, tube. it was pretty big, actually. It had a big windscreen. It was for sports casting. It had a big gooseneck on it, and it was like this ridiculous contraption that I was able to get from I'd get a demo of one time, and I used it. <laughs> it's on YouTube somewhere. $2,400 headset, headset mic. Sheps and B&Ks, man. <laughs> Not cheap mics. Not at all. No compromises. Yeah, they are good, though. Definitely. I mean, Neumann's too, but those are like... Like, Sheps doesn't even try to make a 103. They're like, you're going to make a $1,000 microphone? Ha! We'll make a $7,000 <laughs> microphone, you know? Yeah. Like, our cheapest mic is $2,000. I would love to, at some point, find out uh, how the 416 did become so prevalent. You know, was it? I always, honestly, I always heard it was Don LaFontaine. I remember I was shocked when uh, I found out, like, really, 416? It was, Just for the record, it was not the mic that was in his booth when I met him. Like, I never saw him using that booth. The 416 was not the mic that Don LaFontaine used. Not when I met him. I mean, I worked with him in 2005, but he'd already been recording for 20 years by that point. Andrew, when did the 416 become all the rage? Because when I started in, like, 1998, it was, like, you know, U87s, 414s. A couple people are using shotguns, but I'm just a, like, early engineer who's, like, shotguns are colored you only use them because you have to because you have you know mitigating circumstances why would you ever use a shotgun in a perfectly clean booth and i and i start working on higher end commercials and I, and you start finding these voice talent who are using it and actually come to think of it cutters we had vip 50s until like the early 2000s vip and then we 50s? got these my labs oh, okay very interesting mic rectangular diaphragm mm -hmm. so the skinny side of the rectangle is supposed to be give you the best of a small diaphragm mic and the long side of the rectangle is supposed to give you the best of a large diaphragm mic oh far out um but they were they were good and i mean we even had some voice channel go like what's that mic like i need your setup and one guy bought one but by the early 2000s we put 416s in all the booths and eventually that was just the mic, like the the VIP 50s got pushed to the side and everyone who walked in just got by, recorded on a 416 by default. And that's by 2005, I feel like. We were just all 416. So, Andrew, I don't know. When do you feel like the 416 took over? Because I was in radio until 97, so I didn't really see um, any commercial studios because everything was done in the radio station. So there was... From memory, I don't remember seeing any shotguns in any radio stations. It was usually SM7s and stuff. you still and stuff. don't. True. You still don't see shotguns in radio stations. Well, you do yeah. here now. You do see them in the production areas. So, really? Yeah, absolutely. There's f they're all 416s in, in the production areas of radio stations. Um, so the first time I saw a, f a 416 would have been probably late 90s, 97, 98. I guess. So that, that's when it started taking over in like late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. yeah. And then they became everywhere. And a funny story, actually, because I was, um, I was, uh, had to do a job uh, when I was in LA. So I had to find a studio. So I went to LA Sound. And, uh, and of course, they had the 416 there. But I was talking to, I won't mention the person's name because he's pretty high profile and might get the shits with me. But I was talking about the um, 416 with this person and about the foamy and he said no one in this country would ever have the foamy on their 416 it just doesn't happen here i don't know why you guys do that that's ridiculous that's crazy never seen it before well usually you just put the normal you put the normal like you know stedman screen windscreen in front of it not a yeah with, i, I sent him a photograph yeah. there's me in the in the booth la sound with the foamy on the 416 so they definitely had the foamy on well there you go. I always used the foamy. I used to because there's plenty of people who didn't know how to use the mic. You used to, you know, <laughs> it's true. get up all over it and just make it. So, so here's, a, here's a funny one. Even Harlan Hogan's VO1A was based on an older MSL model. Was it based on or was it just an older MXL model? Like No one will really know except him, but they say it's a 10, I think a 1006 or something. It's a 1006. And I have two yeah, of those, totally. and they sound they sound amazing. I got several <laughs> 1006s. Like a really fucking good cheap it's a, mic. It's a U87. Yeah, rip. it's a really good cheap mic. I mean, it just... 
It was the first hundred dollar large diaphragm mic I bought. For me too. And, and then I, and then I had and then I had I won't say who in Australia modify one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, I know yeah. that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll leave that bit out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so the the Sheps headset is the HSC four VXP. <laughs> That's the model number. If you want to look it up, um, and a very unique mic, and the capsule on it is what's probably you're more interested in. And they make different versions, so they have a strong proximity comp- compensation model. So you can get it like designed to actually compensate for proximity effect. Which is interesting because, you know, again, sports, they want the boom right up in front of their mouth to reject background noise. Um, Dude, let's start Let's start putting like parabolic mics in the booth. I know you talked about that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be crazy. Well, the, the capsule, which is funny, I'm looking at an ad for the mic and they don't mention the capsule, but I think I did in my video. I have a video on YouTube from years ago. If you just search for... Um, uh, Widom's World episode 90 headset mic roundup. <laughs> You'll find this video, and I actually try out a bunch of the, mics. the the Kip the the Kip Winger headset mic roundup. <laughs> <Right. laughs> I mean, I was trying from really really cheap crappy stuff all the way up to the ships and everything. Yeah, the, the the stuff that like like you start out with the mics that only pick up s's, <laughs> right. right? Like or, psst, or, psst, or have no low end response. Period. They just roll right. off below yeah, two hundred like, hertz or something. If, if you DS them, they go silent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's just been a tradition of bad sounding headset mics for so many years. Sure has. I mean, do you remember that Audio Technica that I was playing around with? Is it the really cheap one? Like, it's yeah, a it's like a headset mic. It, 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 I think it, it might have been a dynamic, and it didn't even have the headset. It's just a head worn yeah, yeah, mic. Yeah, yeah, but exactly. you had to have, like, like, it didn't even have headphones. I use those for in you. many aerobics <laughs> or fitness studios where budget was an issue. <laughs> Because they were just, yeah. they could be destroyed, you know, and it wasn't a huge loss. But uh, yeah, those are those are classics. But you know, Audio Technica just came up with a headset mic that where they graft a an audio, basically an AT twenty twenty capsule onto a headset, boom, and it's like a two hundred dollar yeah. headphone with with a twenty twenty capsule, and it's pretty freaking bad. I mean, it's pretty good. I mean, you, again, comparing it to what else is out there. It's pretty good. Yeah. But it's still. Well, that's the reality. It's like, I mean, honestly, if someone gave me a voiceover recorder on a cell phone, I'd get it on the yeah, air. Yeah, you'd find a way. And it would, I'd find a way and I'd freaking bass synthesize some stuff and make it sound as good as it can go. And unfortunately, with a lot of clients, they're like, okay, yeah. sounds good. I understand the words. Yeah. Like, they're not, like, sounds like a commercial mm-hmm. to me. But there's, but we know there's a huge, huge, huge difference between all yeah. that stuff. You know, it's like I've, I, I don't know, like I, I still don't like it, but I've had a couple of voices now run into the tiny, basically, road video microphone USB the video thing. mic go to. Yeah, it's like it's like your pinky. That's probably because I've recommended it to a bunch of people. <laughs> you can blame me for that one. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. It's a hundred dollar yeah. mic. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's like, yeah, and and it's like you you find you, the 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 flaws are exposed much quicker, and the escape routes are smaller. It's probably marginally better than the phone mic in the iPhone. Just it's yeah. a shotgun, so it's a little bit more directional. Yeah. At the end of the day, I'm blown away with when you use the iPhone mic correctly, how good it actually can sound. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, and especially if they start putting like arrays of microphones in there and doing yeah. beam forming. That's what they're doing. I don't know which ver- well they're already doing that. I mean, you don't realize it, but they are doing that. They use three capsules and it's a beam Oh, there there's a beam the microphone in the iPhone's a beam oh, forming. Yeah, they mic? have been for quite a while. No shit. I even had an LG phone. It was like a V40 or something. You know, it was probably six years ago. And I could steer the microphone pickup pattern front to back, depending on who. Using, using the yeah, elements. Yeah, I had a little slider the, the on the mic, screen. Yeah. And I could say, make it pick up the guy in front of me and then make it pick me up. And I could go back and forth. So that, that, mm-hmm. that's been around in cell phones for a while. But um, 
anyway, I had a lot of fun doing interviews with the new Rode wireless kit with the wireless ME because they use the, the Rode Capture app on the phone will shoot both cameras. So I'm shooting a video of me and shooting a video of the guest and they have a mic and I have a mic. So when I'm done, I have two videos and two audio tracks to manipulate and post. And it's amazing like how good of a production you can make from that really simple Yeah, yeah, setup. yeah. From like your pocket. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I did a couple. I posted yeah. a couple interviews. Was that the one with the woman from Heil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. This is this is why we're all out of business. I thought you. I thought you'd actually done some naughty shots in, but uh, I didn't realize you were actually live with your bits to camera as well. What's going on with the AI voice realm? Is that calmed down, or is, are people still freaking out on AI taking over? I haven't seen it seems much. Seems like it's less, a little bit less discussed recently. I haven't seen much at all. What microphone do you use on an AI, on an AI voice? <laughs> How many drummers does it take to change a light bulb? Mm -hmm. I'll True. tell you, the same number of voiceovers it takes to read a book. <laughs> None. Because <laughs> you just get an AI to do it. Well, that was fun. Is it over? The Pro Audio Suite. With thanks to Triber. And Austrian Audio. Recorded using Source Connect. Edited by Andrew Peters. And mixed by Robbo. Got your own audio issues? Just ask Robbo.com. Tech support from George the Tech Whittem. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and join in the conversation on our Facebook group. To leave a comment, suggest a topic, or just say good day, drop us a note at our website. ProAudioSuite.com.